Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name's Kirsty Black and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the last session of today, which is a, a poster plus session. So it's slightly different this one. The questions don't go through the app. Um, after each speaker, we'll have five minutes for questions. So if you just say them verbally. Okay, so first up it is Steve Wright and he's here to talk about the smart cap system. Uh, yeah, so I'll just hand you over to Steve. Thanks, Kirsty, and we're starting five minutes late, so no time for questions. <laughs> Great to be here. Uh, anybody here in at the maturation sessions before break? A lot of science, a lot of understanding of what's happening in maturation, and um, I think as much that we don't still understand, and I think it's fascinating, the modeling that's being done. So I'm here to talk about something that is um, really easier to, to understand, and really what I'm presenting is, is dead simple for all of us to, to get. So I have been invited to uh, give an assessment of this guy here, and you'll find uh, the smart cap um, downstairs, um, one of the booths. The, the two founders are in the back room here. Um, you can corner them to get more details on the commercial aspects of this, but I'm here to talk about the performance of this smart cap in helping reduce maturation losses from barrels that are stored in a palletized fashion. So what happens when you palletize barrels uh, in Canada and in Scotland and most of the uh, whiskey producing countries outside of the US, we're using um, ex-bourbon barrels and we typically will reuse these barrels a number of times, usually a finite number of times. Um, much of the industry has moved from traditional rack or rick warehousing to palletized storage. And what we have found um, is with the reuse of barrels that are palletized, um, the barrels become subject to drying of the heads. Um, your barrel is always being oriented permanently in an upright position. It's being, in many cases, automatically drained and then immediately refilled. Um, in some cases, never actually re-wetting the barrel head. So the barrel head will dry out with time and potentially can stay dry. You get shrinking of the barrel head. Uh, you get more of a, a space between the crows and the barrel head, which provide leak points. Um, you find that we get uh, swelling of the, or, or um, uh, twisting of the, the barrel heads as well, warping, uh, which makes it challenging in some cases to actually drill a proper um, head bung hole in to the top of the barrel, you sometimes end up with, with oblong um, bung holes, which obviously don't seal very well. So um, the company that I'm here to report the results of um, my testing on performance um, decided let's come up with a, a, a simplistic method of trying to control the losses through the bare head, barrel head by creating, again, a plastic um, polymeric um, cap it does come with a removable um, center cap that allows access to the center bung. Um, it was lost in transit, so thank you, DHL, for allowing us to uh, show you a somewhat leaky um, barrel head. Um, <clears throat> more on this in a second. So my name again, Steve Wright. I'm an independent consultant from Southwestern Ontario. I was asked, my um, business partner, also a consultant from Southwestern Ontario, Dan DeMarco, was asked to evaluate the performance of this uh, cap on reducing emissions and losses. So let's start off here. The company has been um, developing this really for five years now. And um, again, we were asked to develop the, to design um, experiments to test the performance of this cap on helping reduce losses. So high density polyethylene cap, um, it does have an elastic monomer seal around the lip of the wall that actually swells when it's exposed to ethanol vapor and it will provide a very snug fit just below the top um, um, hoop of the barrel. So it provides a, a, a very good seal. The, uh, elastomer is made in three different thicknesses to account for variations in the size or the diameter of the barrel head itself. So whether you're using a very ancient 185 liter barrel or one of the more modern 200 liter barrels, there are somewhat uh, slight size differences in the diameter and this accommodates those differences. 
So we set up a very simple test protocol to evaluate the, uh, the impact of the cap on reducing uh, um, warehousing or maturation losses. Simply, um, we have a control set of barrels that were uncapped. We have a, uh, a test set that was capped with the barrels. We then stored them in traditional um, palletized um, um, configurations in various warehouses. We, did, we conducted two trials. The first trial, as you can see, um, the whiskey was already, had already been filled into uh, an assortment of barrels, majority 200 liter uh, conventional um, um, bourbon casks um, with as much as 20 to 25% of the older, slightly smaller cask, 185 liters. Um, they were stored in uh, sea containers, uh, stacked in, on pallets too high, and were left for two years. And we did um, weight evaluations of the full palletized um, uh, barrels um, at the start of the, the test and at various stages during the, the maturation program. So we're basically looking at um, differences in weight loss um, between the control, the uncapped, and the test samples. We tested um, uh, over 150 barrels in each of the two tests. So the second trial, we were using newly, freshly filled reused barrels. Again, these are all reused barrels, different configurations, uh, filled with uh, Canadian uh, new make spirit, and the caps were applied immediately after filling, and we will see some differences in the performance between the two tests. And those were stored, actually stacked seven high on pallets in a conventional uh, maturation warehouse. Uh, both, both were unheated, exposed to ambient temperature changes. And this, this second trial was conducted over a one-year period. <clears throat> both trials were, um, were set up so that um, we were evaluating in a scientific manner. Um, we selected the barrels, uh, evenly divided them equally between the control and the, and the test uh, uh, conditions. And um, care was certainly taken to, to have equal cooperage quality across um, both the control and the, and the test site. And we um, did all, our, all of our weights on a, uh, using a calibrated platform scale. 168 barrels used in the first trial, 156 in the second trial. So how did we net out? As you can see in the control test, um, one year product, we lost, now these are, these are um, percentage weight losses, all right? We eventually then converted those weight losses to um, alcohol content. But uh, in the control, we lost a mean annualized um, um, loss of 4.18% in the control, and it was reduced down to 3.68% um, in the, the test. So a, a difference of, uh, or a savings, or a, or a reduction in loss of 0.5% per year. Uh, therefore, a 12% um, annual savings in alcohol or weight losses over that test. It gets more interesting in the, on the one-year test where we freshly filled the reused barrels. And as you can anticipate with a freshly filled barrel, we've got more looseness in the, in the head, more potential for, for seepage loss, evaporation around the crows, potentially around the bung head as well. And lo and behold, yes, we did find in our control a higher rate of loss in year one, the one year that we tested in, um, versus actually the same amount of loss annualized as we saw in the first control. So a savings or a reduction in loss of 23% in year one, so substantial. Um, we wanted to ensure that the cap was not in any way either adversely or beneficially impacting the organoleptic quality of the spirits. Um, my company, Spiritech Solutions, looked after the, the organoleptic evaluation, comparing um, randomly selected samples from both the control and the test uh, groups, evaluating them um, organoleptically. We did have um, basic GC analysis done for you know, predominant congeners, fusel oils, ethyl acetate, um, acetaldehyde, uh, and found no difference uh, between the two sets that way either. 
Um, also, we had a bit of a concern as to might there be some migration of plastics, the plasticizers, into the whiskey itself. So we did send out samples to a laboratory in, in the U.S., tested for BPA. We tested for, for 18 um, different phthalates as well, and we found no impact both either organoleptically um, or any detectable um, levels of those um, plasticizers in the product. So that, that was, um, uh, gave us a lot of confidence as well. So, uh, handling and, and storage, um, one might expect we've got a plastic cap. Is that going to in any way affect the, the stability of these stacks? Here we've got them stacked seven high, and we found by driving the empty barrels stacked on top of each other around with a forklift, um, there was no additional movement to this caused by the cap. So, the, 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 the conclusion was that the, the stacking was consistent and it was stable. Uh, no visible damage to the caps. One might anticipate uh, under such a weight load of seven pallets or six pallets stacked on top of the bottom that you might see some deformation or cracking of, of the caps, and we did not see that. Um, a little bit of sloppy uh, forklift driving did result in a, a little bit of uh, damage to a couple of the caps um, by impact with a fork. Uh, you know who loses there. Uh, and those, ca those barrels were actually uh, taken out of the study because they were... Uh, could have wrongly uh, impacted the, the results. So conclusions, um, we determined that yes, the, the cap does capture uh, what would otherwise be lost to the environment through a, a leaky cap or a leaky barrel head. Um, we would visibly, when, when removing the cap, see a lot of condensation of, of ethanol and, and water liquid on the cap that would then be dripping onto the barrel head. Uh, we did see some evidence of a little bit of pooling in a couple of cases of alcohol that had evaporated, condensed, and dropped down. So we were convinced that, yes, the, the cap was doing its job of, of effectively sealing the, the, the top of the barrel. Um, again, annual reduction in year one of the study, where we're now putting the, the barrel into a, um, a, a, a reused, or putting the whiskey into a, a reused barrel, first year, 23% savings. Um, in the two-year study where the whiskey was effectively two years and three years old, because it was already a year old when we started, uh, we did see an annualized, again, um, savings of 12% of total volume, or pardon me, of total weight. Now, when you, when you calculate this based on the alcohol concentration in the barrels, you subtract the weight of the barrels and the pallets, so now you're left with volumes of whiskey this equates to, with a barrel containing 143 liters absolute alcohol, we've got a 200 liter barrel here, for a three year maturation cycle, knowing that year one, the savings are gonna be greater than subsequent years, we're predicting uh, three liters of absolute alcohol savings in a three year maturation cycle. You extend that out to a 10 year maturing cycle, and we're projecting a savings of eight liters of absolute ethanol. And how you value, what price you value for that, that final whiskey, depending on whether you are, this has now become surplus to you, then the, the cost of that savings is the production cost of the whiskey itself. If the whiskey, the 10-year whiskey, is um, a, a, of limited volume, and now you've created new volume, that's a different pricing model. Now the, 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 the cost of that whiskey that you have saved has gone up. So you're also benefiting from lower VOC emissions, um, which isn't necessarily an issue yet, but stay tuned as the regulators decide once again to consider um, uh, penalizing us for, for VOC emissions from our maturation warehouses. Um, and, and ultimately, this does result, um, according to our studies, in a significant enough savings to justify the cost of these, bear, of these heads, which are again, reusable as well. So um, they will keep on ticking. <laughs> so I'm early. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm right on time. <laughs> so let's open the, the, uh, the floor for qu questions. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Steve on this? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Paulina. Mm. Yeah, if you, no, if you can speak into the mic, it's for the recording purposes. If not, I'll be, yeah. Thanks, Paulina. Yeah, thanks for the, the explanation. It's very interesting. For me, I just wondered if there was a, maybe a potential additional 
possibility of using it for container and lorry movement of barrels as well, because currently we're using cardboard covers, but they're a very similar shape mm. and size. Just wondered if that was an application you were thinking about. Yeah, that's a great about. question, um, because with that, you get splashing, obviously, and if you do have a, a reused barrel that still has a loose head, and it does take time for the, for the wood to swell, um, I would say that that would uh, potentially help uh, contain whatever is leaking around the crows, leaking out of the bung, the bung head. So uh, that would make sense, yeah. Hi, um, you mentioned that in the puddles form on mm -hmm. top of the barrels. Um, did you look if there's any like bacterial growth or, or mold forming? Um, we didn't look at it. Visually, there's, there's nothing uh, to see. And the alcohol concentration would be so high that you, we would not anticipate anything like that. So we put the, the, the barrels away at 76% alcohol, which is a pretty typical fill strength for, uh, for Canadian base whiskey. Um, not unlike the... the, the might be slightly higher than what they're putting it away at uh, the base whiskey in Scotland. But at that alcohol concentration, there's really no chance for um, any microbial growth. We also did not see, um, and we were curious whether or not we would, to see if we saw any deterioration of the hoops. None whatsoever. Um, our assumption is the high ethanol environment, yeah, there's a high humidity in that headspace as well, but I suspect that the high ethanol environment and perhaps the limitation of, of oxygen in that headspace probably helped protect those hoops. So uh, we, we saw no negative um, impacts um, structurally to, to the head or the hoop. Thanks. Um, how do you deal with, how does the fit, because it's, it's, it's one size fits all, but how, do well, you, how does it adjust or is it wedged or what? This is available with three different thicknesses of the elastomer that will then, so you want to understand whether you're using the older traditional barrels, which are a slightly smaller di diameter, or the more standard American bourbon barrel, 200 liters, but there are variations even within, and this does account for it. So the, the elastomer actually, it, will, it may go on some barrels slightly loose, but within days, um, in the high ethanol environment, the elastomer swells. Okay. And it does give a snug fit. Yep. Thank you. There may be occasions where the staves are slightly out of alignment, they're not proud, um, that you might have um, you know, slight, slight gaps. But for the majority, those gaps are filled. And they're still reusable. And they're still reusable, yeah. Yep. Okay. okay, any more questions for Steve? No, okay, well. Thanks for your attention, guys. Thank you, Steve.